All this water, where did it come from? There's no doubt that some arrived in comets and asteroids. Studies have proven that. Studies have also proven that water was in the rocks that came together to create Earth billions of years ago. Problem is, despite the presence of water throughout our solar system, there is no other planet like Earth nearby, not with this much water. And where did those comets and pre-Earth rocks get their water? Now, we tend to think of the presence of water and the existence of breathable oxygen to be some sort of lucky coincidence here on Earth. But what if planets with oxygen-rich atmospheres are the ones most likely to have water? More water than the other planets in their solar systems, anyway. When a solar eruption occurs in Earth's direction, a large cloud of plasma and charged particles is ejected and begins racing through space. These eruptions begin to affect Earth far, far away from you, up in Earth's protective layers high above. The solar eruptions, called coronal mass ejections, are mostly protons, racing through space at speeds of hundreds of kilometers per second. If indeed the solar eruption comes at Earth, most is either deflected by Earth's magnetosphere or guided along our field to the polar region. Some small bit inevitably does get through. It begins to slow down and affect Earth's atmosphere. At the end of Star Water Chapter 1, we saw how hydrogen ions in the incoming solar blast produce oxygen eruptions from Earth's upper atmosphere. Let that sink in. Hydrogen-rich solar blasts impacting Earth's atmosphere produce oxygen-rich eruptions from Earth's atmosphere. Some of those particles are likely to interact. The mechanism could be electrochemical or thermally driven in certain ionospheric layers. We really don't know. The existence of the interaction is merely speculation. But it could explain why all the planets have water, but only oxygen-rich Earth has this much. The particles would slow further still, linger in the atmosphere, and as they cooled and drifted to the night side, they would cling together and to other particles. The funneling of particles to the poles might help explain noctilucent clouds and their advancing presence timed as NASA tracks Earth's weakening magnetic shield. We're taught that all heavy elements are created in supernova, but let's take a look at what we know about the solar wind, at least what we know about the wind from our star. We've already discussed the fact that the majority of the solar wind and coronal mass ejections is hydrogen and hydrogen ions. After that, there is a smaller but scientifically significant amount of helium in the solar wind as well. NASA's JPL Genesis mission has measured almost every known element in the solar wind. Every known element. So let's shift to examining a sample of the evidence for water in the cosmos. Another example of water present before planetary formation. Using the Very Long Baseline Array in 2008 and 2009, scientists detected water fountains and pre-planetary nebulae initially discovered by the IRIS infrared detector. In early September 2013, Japanese scientists detected water in the atmosphere of an exoplanet classified as a super-Earth. Galice 1214b was observed transiting its sun with an advanced spectrograph. Yet another example of pre-planetary water, five times the water of Earth was detected by NASA's Spitzer Telescope, coalescing into a new solar system. It was only weeks earlier that National Geographic had presented findings of the first water on an exoplanet. Another example from the NRAO details how most stars have a water frost line. On Sun-like stars, it's actually found around Jupiter. While these and the following articles indicate that planets and even stars form out of icy clouds and dust, 
and that while we can detect water even inside of some stars, and while we can even find water in sunspot umbras existing as superheated steam, none of these amazing findings by the world's best scientists fully explain why Earth is so favored among our system. Even the fact that we have seen stars shooting water bullets doesn't explain our good luck, but it sure is fun to think about. So let's do it. Let's come to a young star, its disk still collapsing and coalescing into the one day planets that will orbit the system. Powerful electromagnetic forces are forcing charged particles, plasma and water into space, north and south and what will one day become its Oort cloud as those particles flow out and curl back around like the polar magnetic fields themselves to form the icy cocoon around the system. These cosmic jets will be an important part of the latter chapters of star water. The manner in which a lot of this genuine star water is likely to have formed might now seem familiar. I imagine that's about cold enough for water to exist. Some stars may even have watery atmospheres. It seems NASA has had its eye on these topics for decades. It appears high water and hydroxyl content near the interstellar boundaries is a common thing. And the older the star, the more water you find near the edges. The solar wind must play a vital role in this effect. In latter chapters, we'll see just how much water we see near our galactic center houses a great deal of water. The ingredients for water, life, indeed the full spectrum of elements is departing the stars every second and has been for billions of years. And yet, our own solar system is proof that distribution of water on every planet is not necessarily equivalent to conditions for life. Earth is special, and to find other Earths, we have to understand what about our planet we need to look for. You'll notice the pretty colors of this alien world, this alien Earth. You've seen just how well we can detect particles in the atmospheres of those distant planets and stars. Well, for three billion years, the Earth has been rich in oxygen. That's an extra 700 million years the experts didn't think we had. For three billion years, the Sun has been pumping out hydrogen, and the Earth has been erupting oxygen to meet it. For three billion years. Earth tipped the scales of hydration in its favor as the most oxygen-rich planet. We're relatively close to our star with no shortage of particles. In the planetary scheme, we've seen here and across the galaxy, receiving the solar wind and everything that comes along with it means receiving the ingredients for life, everything we need. So I repeat my question. What if the planets with oxygen-rich atmospheres 
are the ones most likely to have water, oxygen rich, and the rest will take care of itself. We have a lot to learn about the manufacturing logistics of our universe. It is, of course, possible that rogue planets blasting through the icy cocoons could disrupt the distribution in a given system, a controversial and more cataclysmic scenario we'll discuss in the next chapter along with more on elemental distribution via cosmic means outside of supernova and similar events.